I didn't. I, I also didn't know uh, how much you were uh, into the heroin. Yeah, I was pretty, pretty, you know, big fan of the age. <laughs> big fan. I always thought it was just heavy drinking and a, you know, no. drug here, here and there. I didn't know that the heroin was really uh, a major part of your life for a while. I never, I never took it on the road, and I didn't take it into the studio. It was, it was something. If I was working, I didn't need it. But when we were on off time, I just didn't know how to, what to do with myself. I would get bored, and I would hook up with somebody, and they'd get, and then just doing it the one time would start this whole thing rolling. Mm. And so that you, nobody really knew that much about it because it wasn't very public and, and I was pretty private about it. Right. I, I was amazed that like Guns N' Roses was starting to blow up and uh, you didn't have guitars to play because you were like, uh, you know, pawning them off to get some uh, some dope. Smack, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, is that amazing? <laughs> wow. I know. I just, it's like I have very few regrets of none, you know, but at the same time, there's a couple of guitars I wish I knew where they went. Right. Oh. You know? And then they had to get you guitars when uh, Appetite for Destruction was being recorded. I'm yeah. like, this is fucked up. The Actually, guy. we were talking, I was talking earlier about this for some um, I went to a, a Guns N' Roses show in Vegas just to go see what that was all about. You know, wow. so I've, I've never stood in front of Guns N' Roses, and I, but I wasn't allowed in. So. Get out of here. Are you I've, I've never seen it. Yeah. They wouldn't let you in? They wouldn't let me in. Well, you got to get you gotta get a disguise. Well, I didn't know that was gonna happen. You, know? <laughs> you gotta get a disguise. I think you wouldn't can let you out. in. <laughs> yeah. the, wow. What did they say to you? You can't. You just. You they can't. just. They just. I think uh, it was the manager at the time. They just said, you know, the, what happened was I, I, I called up one guy, one of the promoters, and said, can you get me tickets to another gig? And that was the same night as the show. I flew from L.A. to Las Vegas, got to the Hard Rock, and everybody in the building knew I was coming. It was like this big. And so I got to got to the room and was getting ready to go down there with my, my wife and everything. And uh, the security came to my room, knocked on the door, and said, "No, we can't let you out. Yeah, you just either stay here or leave the building." <laughs> How close were you to joining Poison back in the day? That made me laugh in the bar. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> it was it was it was. Uh, I don't know what happened was uh, their their first guitar player, this guy named Matt, um, called me up and said that he was going back to Pennsylvania to. His, I guess his girlfriend was pregnant. He was going to get married and all that. And I should I should hook up with Poison. I was out in L.A. just looking for a gig, always just wandering from group to group and just picking up where I could and trying to get exposure and all that kind of stuff. And Poison was uh, by far the biggest club band at that time. He says, you should go try out for Poison. You know? And I was like, yeah, there's an image thing that was a real contrast. <laughs> a little like, bit but, of a problem. Yeah, and, and so, but I went down to their rehearsal place in L.A. and... Uh, and I, they gave me a tape of like four or five songs, and I learned those those songs, and and came back the next day and played them with the band and kicked the shit out of them. It's like, you know, and so they were they were pretty much stunned by that, you know, because I don't think Matt was really what you consider a great guitar player, but I had a, a good feel, you know. So so they had me come down another day, and I played. Then we had this long conversation about fashion, and that's when it really. <laughs> the, the obvious became really I, more, even more apparent. I just imagine after you, after you ripped up the audition and, and killed, that yeah. the next step was they handed you mascara and you went, whoa, well, hey, yeah, hey, hey, whoa. The, 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 the basis for, for, for uh, the sort of fashion discrepancy was they asked me about my shoes, like what kind of oh, shoes really? I was going to wear. And I was wearing some, you know, what I considered cool beat-up moccasins, and I was like, what's the issue with the shoes? And, then I, I think we went on to like what kind of outfit, and they sort of knew that they were getting nowhere with it. And so when I was leaving that day, though, CC was walking in, and that was the classic part of the whole thing. Was I was I was walking out, and CC was walking in. We didn't know each other, but he was like dolled up in like light blue and white and blonde teased and hair, teased hair yeah. and, all. and that was where an audition. I guess it was a sort of dress rehearsal, and and I just said that's the. Guy. Yeah, enjoy the game. Yeah, and I got, yeah, and <laughs> yeah. I got the phone call saying it's not going to work out. We're going to use CC, and I was like, all things considered, it was sort of a relief. You 